Hello everyone. So I decided to bring back my Krupa my FTG career in in a live stream mode. Most of you know that I um, stopped doing this because I I barely have any time to record and edit the videos. So maybe I will try this from now on, and hopefully um, this will work out fine. So basically, I, I kept playing this after after a while. I'm now on the 24th of February, 2020. So it's been a long time. When I left you before, I was about to ride. Um, I think it was Ronde van Vlaanderen, so around April. So it's almost a year. So I I think it's good to tell you how the results went in the previous season. So starting with Eschborn Frankfurt, um, I got fourth with Arnaud Demar. It was won by Pascal Ackerman. Also Arnaud Demar won uh, the Prudential Ride London Surrey Classic. Also going up to the the other bigger classics. So starting with Amstel Gold Race. Valentin Madois, the young Frenchman, managed to win this one ahead of Tim Valens and Mathieu van der Poel. In La Flèche Vallon, David Godou got third behind the two big favorites, Julien Lafilippe and Alejandro Valverde. Also going to Classica San Sebastian, David Godou managed the win ahead of Julien Lafilippe. I remember this was a really cool one because Godou got away in the final hill and then managed to keep the lead until the line. It was really close. In the Euro IC Classic, Hamburg, Arnaud Demar was beaten by Caleb Ewan once again. He only got third. In the Bretagne Classic, Sebastian Reichenbach with a late, late attack almost took the win, uh, but then he was caught and Simon Clark was the winner there. In the Canadian Classics, I wasn't really focusing in trying a good result with, with any of my riders. So Thibaut Pinot got 8 in the Quebec one, um, and then my best rider. I really tried to go with Leo Vincent in Montreal, um, and he was the one uh, getting the best result, but he was only 11th. In Ronde van Vlaanderen, things didn't really work out for, for my team. My best rider was Arnaud Demar, who was only 20th. In Paris-Roubaix, he did a bit better. Um, he was 12th only. He got dropped from the main group. But um, he didn't complete the sponsor goal, which was to finish in the top 10. In liege baston liege David Godou managed a really good result. He was second, only beaten by Julien Lafilippe. And then in Il Lombardia, I got fifth with uh, uh, Thibaut Pinot. I was actually trying to go with David Godou for this one, um, but he failed to to perform at a, a top level. So Thibaut Pinot became my uh, main rider for this one. In the Basque Country, David Godou was ninth in the GC. Less than a minute, I think, from the leader, uh, from the winner, Egan Bernal. It was a really close race. Then in Romandie, I didn't really have anyone for the GC. Leo Vincent got 10th, which was actually not a bad result. In the Dauphiné, Thibaut Pinot was my leader, uh, preparing himself for the Tour de France, and he was third behind Tom Dumoulin and Geraint Thomas. In the Tour de Suisse, again, no one for the GC. Um, and actually, this was really disappointing because I thought I was going to take one stage win, at least, with Stefan Kung in one of the two time trials, but he failed to do so. He was third in both of them, so it was kind of a disappointment. In Pologne, Valentin Madla was leading the team. He only got eight. It wasn't magnificent. I don't recall. I think I did get a stage win, at least, with Mark Sacher. I can actually check that. If... In last year, he got, yeah, he actually won three stages in Tour de Pologne last season. And then in the Bing Pong Tour, um, Arnaud Demar was the winner. And I actually feel like I was cheating, kind of cheating in this one, because um, Demar was 
um, well, I took advantage of the golden kilometers and it was so easy to get bonus seconds that it really felt like I was cheating. I'm now going to the Grand Tours and in the Giro d'Italia, the first big, big surprise, I think, uh, in the season, I got third in the GC with Sebastian Reichenbach. Um, he was only beaten by Mika Landa and Rigoberto Uran. Mika Landa winning his first Grand Tour in his career. Reichenbach was in a tremendous form for this race. He was having plus five and plus four race day conditions for the entire race. It was really impressive. Um, he did not win any stage in this one, um, but he got a really, really insane GC result. Then in La Vuelta, David Bodu coming from uh, being a domestic for Thibaut Pinot in the Tour. He got second in the, um, in the GC, being beaten by Mikel Landa. So Mikel Landa took two Grand Tours in, in the same season. Really amazing. Um, Godou, I think, won two stages here. Let me, let me check. And maybe I'm going... To, no, I'm not going to check this because I'm going to spoil something else. So <laughs> I won't actually check this. Um, but yeah, he took, I think, two stage wins. So now going to the Tour de France. So it was the big goal of Thibaut Pinot uh, for the season. We were supposed to win this, and we won this. Thibaut Pinot managed to take the win in the Tour de France, beating Tom Dumoulin and Primoz Roglic. He only got the yellow jersey, I think, four stages from the end, if I'm not mistaken. So it was always he was always trying to uh, regain the time that he lost mainly in the team time trial of stage two but it was it was a really fun race um Geraint thomas seemed to be the strongest rider in the first week but then he progressively lost the lead he had a terrible individual time trial um the one that in real li life was won by julien lafilippe and actually thibaut pinot performed really well there and the reason he performed really well there, Thibaut Pinot was individual time trial champion of France. In the road race, Valentin Madois won the championship for Groupe MFTG, so it was really amazing. Finally, I just want to show you the results of the world championship, the road race. David Godou got the win. He got away in the, in the final few kilometers and then managed to keep the lead and he beat Dylan Toons and Peter Sagan in the end to take the rainbow jersey for a season in Groupama FTG. I wanted to focus mainly on riders from France, uh, Switzerland and Italy. I, I got Bob Jungels for the team. I actually didn't want to sign him uh, in the beginning. I was trying to go for first Matteo Trentin because he's Italian and a good rider in the Northern Classics. Then I tried Alberto Bettiol, another Italian, if he didn't accept my offer as well. So I went for Bob Jungels. Trying to go with the French riders, I kind of cheated here as well. I went for Pavel Sivakov. Um, as far as I know, he's, um, he has double nationality, so he has French nationality as well, or he was grown, he grew up in France or something like that. So I think you can count him as half French. Um, then I brought in two more, I wouldn't call them top sprinters, uh, but mid-level sprinters in Brian Cocard, a French sprinter, 27 years old. And I also brought Davide Cimola in Italian. He is going to be a sprinter for smaller races, and but mainly a lead-out rider. Um, also, for a mix of uh, Northern Classics and Sprint, I brought in Magnus Kort, a Danish rider, which is not too bad, because last season I had Daniel Olgaard, who was a Norwegian, now I, I have a Danish. Also for the Northern Classics, I brought in Florian Seneschal. He won quite a few races last season. So I also brought Alessandro, Alessandro De Marchi, um, an experienced rider, a punchy rider. 
who is probably going to help a lot in the Grand Tours. Arthur Fichot, kind of the same, but maybe maybe trying to go for smaller stage races and for some um, hilly finishes. I have this Latvian uh, new gen in the in the race. He's 22 years old and a really complete rider. I also brought in Mark Hirschi, a uh, young Swiss talent, punchy rider. And I think that was it um, in terms of signings. I re-signed with a few others. So now going to a bit of racing, now that I showed you the previous results, um, is going to be the GC leader and Bahrain Kokar, even if he's not on a great fitness, is going to be the best sprinter for the team. And as you all know, or if, as some of you may know, my daughter is singing in the background. That's all already a classic in when I'm streaming something. So we start this race with a team time trial, 16.9 kilometers long. Um, in this one, we have the Hebel Hafit um, Ascension and also the Hebel Haiz. So it's not twice the same the same climb as we have in the real race in 2020. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. She does bring something special to the stream, I think. So let's start this one with the individual, uh, not individual, with the team time trial. So some riders. Oh, a lot of riders in the really poor race day condition oh this is going to hurt so much wow but wow miles cotton is having what this is 84 prologue stat yet yeah, scotton is really looking impressive sivakov is looking nice as well kung is kung a shame that toma um, is not that great. Konovalova is the same. Even the Marki. The Marki is terrible. So now, Stefan Kung on his 22 second relay. Let's see how we do on the intermediate checkpoint. And we are third, but on the same time as the other two teams, Emirates and Movistar, which were the others that were the favorites for, for this stage. So this is looking quite good. Now Scottson doing his long relay. I don't really know how I should approach this. Maybe the Marky, yeah, the Marky will go to the back and he won't do any more relays. And I will just focus on the remaining riders. We are now on Scottson in his amazing plus four day. This is absolutely insane. It's now Sivakov leading the team, 2.5 kilometers to go. After him, it will be Kung, and probably Kung will take the team to the finish line. Uh, team Emirates has the best time. Movistar is two seconds behind. Let's see, actually, Sivakov is the one going... No, it's Kung. And we get the best time. Wow, great result. One second faster than Team Emirates. We now have Education first. They were 9 seconds behind in the intermediate, 22 seconds behind now. And wow, WC, uh, W52 FC Porto is in this one. Now Lotus Sudal, they come in 21 seconds behind. And of course, W52 is not going to take the win here. And we get the stage win here. Way to go. Great result. What a way to start this one. So let's have Sivakov and Kokart here at the front, keeping their positions. Also, Benjamin Toma is going to be my lead out, I think. Wow, Kokart, I'm not seeing on a minus two race day condition. This is not really great for him. A really low resistance stat. Come on, Scottson, you're a bit blocked there. 20 kilometers to go still. De Kunik is pacing a bit. Let's increase the pace for a bit. Okay, Scottson is here. And 
I'm now going to have him facing at the front, already preparing Kung here at 99. Actually, Sivakov needs to go, let's put him on 95 just so he can stay at the front, being protected by Konovalovas. Let's now use the energy gel on Miles Scottson. Use it also on Konovalovas and Demarki, why not? And now I will do the same for Kung. I think Scottson is going to run out of energy really early. This is not ideal. Energy gel on Toma. 5.3 kilometers to go. Energy gel now on Kokar. Let's now take Stefan Kung to the front and increase the effort with him. Let's go 95 for now. Let's now increase progressively to 99. Let's see how this goes. Ooh, I will need to start sprinting with Toma now. Let's see. This is not going to go that well. Brian Kokar now going for the sprint and is definitely not going to take this. Ah, he launched too late. The win is for Dylan Grunewagen. Kokar is only ninth. Can I blame this on his poor race day condition? Will you guys take that? <laughs> yeah, key. <Aki>, sorry. <laughs> the sprint tutorial was the was done with Elie Gigiani, not with Brian Kokar. Okay, so big day for the GC, big day for Pavel Sivakov. Let's just put here this 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 way. Um Sivakov how is he not among the top favorites for the win here? Oh, because this is considered a hilly stage, not a mountain stage. Okay, yeah, I want to prove Pro Cycling Manager wrong, and I want to win this one. And we are almost starting, we are already uh, going up with Education First now moving to the front. Uh, should I try to put on some pace here? Maybe... Corendon is doing a tremendous job, but I'm going to put Stefan Kung at the front to try to pace a bit. We are catching the guys from the breakaway. Oh, the pace is quite strong, actually. I need to increase this effort quite a lot. Kung protecting Konov all of us again. Okay, wow, this pace. CCC putting in a really impressive pace. Wow. I'm really surprised by this. I was not counting on this. I really wasn't. Okay, the Marki and Sivakov can drop their effort a bit. 6.5 kilometers to go to the top. I'm actually putting um, no. Konovalov is protecting Sivakov. Kung can protect uh, Demarki. Let's see how this goes. We have Lutsenko attacking at the front. I need to respond with Sivakov. He needs to increase the pace. Let's see what he can do. He's being. I need to take Demarki there as well. Who is there? Most of the important guys are there. I was a bit distracted by my daughter. Ah! This is so lame, I'm blaming her. Am I really doing this? <laughs> okay, let's drop the effort now a bit. Let's bring Demarki here to protect Sivakov. He can use his energy gel and... Oh, I missed this. I missed this so hard. Also use the energy gel on Sivakov. We still have Nibali here, Roglic as well, Fuglsan pushing. Mario Quintana, let's try to do the best we can. Let's see. We have Tom Dumoulin at the front with Dan Martin and Mikael Landa. We are going nicely, I think. Landa is being dropped. 
1.5k to go. I need to drop this a bit. The other ones don't seem to be that strong. We are catching Dan Martin. We are here. Everyone is really tired. Let's sprint now. Let's try to be second. Tom Dumoulin is clearly taking the win here. And Vincenzo Nibali or Pavel Sivakov, one of them is going to be second. Sivakov takes second. 30 seconds behind Tom Dumoulin. And Dumoulin is going to move to the lead in the GC. I think Sivakov is going to be second. 31 seconds behind, together with Nibali and Fuglsang. Roglic, Dan Martin, already a minute behind. And in the GC, of course, Dumoulin takes the lead. 22 seconds ahead of Pavel Sivakov. Vincenzo Nibali is third, 37 seconds behind. There are still four stages to go in this Emirates tour. And it's really late, I need to put my daughters to sleep. Um, the problems of being a parent. Um, yeah, but also Sivakov, I think it just triggered his um, fitness peak. A shame it wasn't on the previous stage. Now we'll finish the, um, the stream here. Thank you all for, for watching and for putting up with me. Bye guys, I hope you have enjoyed. See you next time.